Welcome to 101 South Maple Street. Since Dietrich and Lena Friedrichs built this house in 1906, it has been home to two families, a handful of tenants, and now the Mount Prospect Historical Society. Each group of residents has left their mark on this house. Dietrich, Lena, and their daughter Bessie lived in this home for 60 years. From this corner of town, they not only grew as a family, but also watched Mount Prospect grow from a tiny community to a rapidly developing suburb. After Dietrich and Lena's passing, Bessie decided to move into a home of her own with her husband, Charles Barnes. She sold 101 South Maple to Richard and Jane Webb in 1966. Just like the Friedrichs family, Richard and Jane adapted the home to meet the needs of modern life and personal preferences. In 1975, First Chicago Bank of Mount Prospect purchased the property from the Webbs. A branch of this bank was located across the street and the bank originally intended to demolish the historic home to make room for a parking lot. However, the village rejected this plan because it would place a parking lot in the middle of a residential area. Instead, First Chicago Bank rented the house to various tenants. First Chicago Bank eventually decided to sell 101 South Maple Street in 1987. They first approached the village of Mount Prospect with this offer, and the village then turned to the Mount Prospect Historical Society. Historical Society board members and volunteers began an intense fundraising campaign to raise the $94,000 needed to purchase the house. First Chicago Bank donated the first $16,000, and individuals and local businesses donated the rest of the funds. It was truly a community project. Fundraising efforts included door-to-door -door campaigning, bake sales, breakfasts, and other special events. In less than a year, and with only one short extension, the Historical Society reached its $94,000 goal. The fundraising was by no means over after reaching their initial goal. Continued fundraising covered the costs of repairing and restoring 101 South Maple Street to its 1917 appearance. Volunteers spent countless hours researching furnishings and household items appropriate for an early 20th century home. Former residents Bessie Friedrichs Barnes and Jane Webb also enthusiastically contributed their memories of living in the home. On September 12, 1992, the Dietrich Friedrichs House Museum officially opened to the public and it's been sharing Mount Prospect's history ever since. This home's white exterior was an easy to spot landmark as the quote unquote, white house on the corner during the Friedrichs residency. Dietrich took great pride in maintaining his home's paint job, which also served as a great advertisement for his painting and decorating business. Sometime after the Friedrichs moved out in 1966, the house was repainted yellow. Behind the house once stood both a carriage house and a garage. The garage was deemed unstable by the time the Historical Society purchased the property so it was demolished in 1989. In 1995, the Education Center was constructed on the site of the old garage. The carriage house is now home to the John Mind Blacksmith exhibit and storage on the other side. The Friedrichs family made a few additions to the house in the 1920s. This enclosed porch is one of those changes. One of the workers on this project, Louis Moulter, signed his name on the wall, and the restoration team decided to leave that section of the wall open as part of the house's history. The parlor was one of the most formal rooms in a 19th and early 20th century home, and that made it the perfect place to entertain guests and show off the family's finery. For instance, here on the mantel is a Seth Thomas brand clock, a wedding present to Lena and Dietrich. The electric fireplace below was a fashionable addition when it was installed in the 1920s. On the other side of the room, Dietrich and Bessie would have entertained guests with their musical talents. Bessie grew up playing the piano, and Dietrich played both the violin and harmonica. Dietrich's violin and harmonicas are sitting on top of the piano, though the piano did not belong to the Friedrichs. Through the pocket doors is the dining room. 
The pocket doors were popular when the house was built, but as time went on, they became outdated. Eventually, the doors were replaced with an archway, making the space feel much more open and modern. However, the pocket doors were reinstalled during the Historical Society renovation. While there are many beautiful things to see in the dining room, the objects with the most mileage are the table and chairs at the center of the room. This dining room set originally belonged to the Friedrichs family, but it was sold during a yard sale when Bessie was selling the house in 1966. A woman named Nancy purchased the set and later brought it to California when she moved. Forty years later, in 2006, Nancy learned that 101 South Maple Street had become a museum, so she donated the set back to the house. Just around the corner from the dining room is Dietrich's office. He was a house painter and decorator, so he would have spent only part of his time working here. The beams in the ceiling and the light fixture are original to the house. In the 1980s, this room became a young man's bedroom. This resident had a cat, who later had kittens. This one tenant at the time remembers seeing the kittens roam all over the house. The patriotic wallpaper in this earlier photo was probably added by the Webbs in the 1970s. Preparations for the nation's bicentennial inspired many design schemes during this time period. Now this room is used as a historical society research room. It contains a fraction of our files on people, places, and events throughout Mount Prospect's history, as well as offers a space for volunteers and researchers to work on projects. Right outside of Dietrich's office is the kitchen, Lena's main workspace and the heart of the home. Back in the early 1900s, the kitchen was a multi-purpose workspace. Lena, and later Bessie, would have done many household chores here, from cooking the day's meals to laundry. You could see Lena's apron here in the corner. With so much work going on here, it's no wonder Lena placed a lucky horseshoe over the room's doorway. Over the years, the Friedrichs adapted their kitchen to meet the needs of modern life. The sink now standing here is original, but the Friedrichs moved it to the basement when they remodeled the room. Here in this 1960s photo, you can see just how many changes were made in the approximately 60 years since it had been built. The small room off the kitchen is currently back in its original use as a pantry, after having spent some time as a bathroom. The cabinet is not original, but is a replica created during the Historical Society restoration based on the memories of Bessie Friedrichs Barnes and Jane Webb. Here in the hallway, next to the stairs, we pass by the hall tree. If you were visiting the Friedrichs family in the early 1900s, this is where you would hang your hat and coat. It originally belonged to the Friedrichs, but was left behind when they sold the house to the Webbs. When the Historical Society was restoring this house, the Webbs donated it back to be part of the museum. The Historical Society restoration team decided to leave this section of the wall open so that visitors could see the house's wood and plaster construction. The old electric wiring system is also visible. This bathroom was originally a storage closet when the house was built in 1906. About 10 years later, indoor plumbing arrived in this part of Mount Prospect. So, the Friedrichs added the toilet, sink, and bathtub. That original bathtub is still in the bathroom to this day. Researchers developing the house tour in preparation for the new museum discovered this model listed for $46.80 in a 1917 Sears catalog. This tub was in use from the time it was installed until the mid-1980s. That's almost 70 years. This room once belonged to Bessie Friedrichs Barnes. She lived at 101 South Maple for almost her entire life, and that experience was essential to restoring the house and creating the museum. There are a few items here that once belonged to Bessie. Her baby blanket rests on the end of her bed, and a small Statue of Liberty figurine sits on top of the wardrobe. The figurine was a gift from a family friend purchased while on his visit to Washington, D.C. in the summer of 1923. Bessie's high school scrapbook and 1929 diploma from Arlington High School are also on display in her room. She always loved learning and was especially proud of her diploma, an uncommon accomplishment for a girl in a rural town at this time. After graduation, Bessie hoped to become a teacher, but she never got to live that childhood dream. Although that was a disappointment, we hope she's pleased to know that her childhood home is teaching so many people about her family and life in the past. Dietrich and Lena Friedrichs used to occupy the master bedroom. Thanks to a donation from their daughter Bessie, we have objects from them on display here. 
Spread across the bed is a white quilt with red embroidered flowers, animals, and scenes of children playing. Lena did the quilting and her sister did the embroidery. On the dresser by the closet are a few items that belong to Dietrich. The mother of pearl shirt studs and monogrammed cufflinks would have been worn with his most formal outfits. The bird sculpture near the back of the dresser was crafted from a single piece of horn, which Dietrich found very impressive. For that reason, he always displayed it on his dresser. The dresser on the opposite side of the room showcases some of Lena's items. Her heart-shaped locket rests on a handkerchief with mother embroidered in one corner. The locket contains photos of Dietrich and Bessie, two of the most important people in her life. The Elgin watch was a gift from Dietrich on their 40th wedding anniversary in 1944. This adjoining room was a multi-purpose room for many years before the house became a museum. Researchers restoring the house in the early 1990s believe that this room was initially used as a nursery because of its proximity to the master bedroom. However, Bessie remembered the room used for storage. It contained an extra bed for house guests, as well as wardrobes full of her parents' extra clothing. Today, this room is set up as a nursery. There are many toys from the Historical Society's collection on display here including antique dolls and books. Bessie's copy of Mother Goose is also in this room. Along the opposite wall, there are two dollhouses. The red one was handmade in 1932, but decorated with store-bought furniture. The other dollhouse dates to 2000 and was lovingly built and decorated by a Mount Prospect couple. The table and chair set between the dollhouses was given to Bessie when she was growing up in this house. This room at the end of the hall was a spare bedroom during the Friedrichs residency. Dietrich and Lena took in boarders before Bessie was born, and those guests likely stayed here. During the early 1980s, a man named Richard H. occupied this room. We know that this was his room because in July 2021, staff discovered his name on a 1983 receipt for $100 that had been stuffed into the door's keyhole. Richard grew up in Mount Prospect, and from 1982 to 1984, he rented the entire house and sublet the rooms to four other people in their late teens and 20s. In early 2009, the Historical Society transformed this room into an exhibit gallery, with debut exhibits on Mount Prospect founding families. Currently, this room is the Historical Society office space, with desks for the office manager and museum director. Thank you for virtually visiting the Dietrich Friedrichs House at the Mount Prospect Historical Society.